Welcome to the Sacred Roots Podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for spending the next 15 minutes with me for this solo cast where we are going to talk about ancient wisdom. As you know, I'm all about mystery teachings. And the more I am evolving myself, the deeper I am diving into those and realize how deeply life-changing they are. Because since the dawn of time, souls have been trying to come back home to themselves, express their highest potential, find true fulfillment, direction, and purpose in their lives. And we've lost a lot of that along the way. But the future is ancient. And it's beautiful that so much of this ancient wisdom is now resurfacing again. Mystery schools are resurfacing again so that we can find more meaning in our life, more purpose in our life, more soulful experiences that truly nourish and fulfill us and bring us freedom too. Freedom and abundance are like the little cherries on the cake that come with that work. Um, so I've been working on a 15-page uh, free workbook for you guys that shares four ancient wisdom teachings to help you truly find fulfillment and direction so that you can uncover and live your purpose. And I want to share two of those teachings with you today. And then if you want to learn more, just click the link in the show notes of this episode so you can download this 15-page free workbook. Like I have put so many hours in this workbook. I could honestly sell this thing for like $1,000 because it is so good. Maybe $10,000 because it's truly like if you understand the depth of these teachings, because there are different layers in ancient wisdom and mystery teachings, there are always different layers. And if you truly apply them to your life, they have the potential to truly change your life for a more expansive, more beautiful, more aligned, more fulfilling, more abundant life. So let's dive in. The first mystery teaching, ancient wisdom teaching that I want to share with you today is know thyself. So know thyself was written on um, the temple of Apollo. The temple of Apollo was in Greece, in Delphi to be exact. And this temple is, we like... Archaeologists are not really like they're not really agreeing on the dates, but they believe that this temple is about um, 6,000 years old, so from 4000 BCE. And the ancient Greeks were very much influenced by the ancient Egyptians, but also by the Druids. There's actually a lot of similarities be between all those ancient mystery schools and uh, spiritual systems. And something that they say, in a lot of those systems and that they have expressed on that temple is that maxim, know thyself. And so through the uninitiated, the person that hasn't gone through spiritual initiation, through mystery schools, and if you go on Wikipedia or Google, you're going to see that know thyself means, oh, know your limits, know your strength, know your weaknesses. And while that is true, this is just surface work. Because if you start to dive deeper, you start to ask yourself, who am I? And as you're on this spiritual journey, I'm sure you've realized that you could observe your own thoughts. Oh, I'm thinking right now that it's raining or that it's snowing or that I'm cold. Well, if you're able to observe your thoughts, who's the observer? Who's the I? I am cold, but I am able to observe the fact that I'm saying I am cold. So which is which? If you're not your thoughts, because you can observe them. If you're not your emotions, because they don't define you. You probably know that the soul is eternal. So you're not your body, you are your soul. Then what does it mean to be a soul? Who are you? Who am I? Know thyself, right? Know who you are. And so this question, who am I, can bring you very, very, very deep. There's many layers to it. And so if you are a soul and you are eternal, 
then what does it mean about this lifetime? Does it mean you've had other lifetimes? Could they be impacting you? How could they be impacting you? The work that you're doing in this lifetime, is it possible that you've already done it in other lifetimes and that you've been preparing for lives and lives and centuries to become so good at it? And if you are a divine being, a spiritual being, having a human experience, then what does that mean about your potential and what you're able to create? So as you see, this concept of knowing yourself can bring you much, much deeper. And the beauty is that the ancient wisdom that we're taught in those mystery schools were helping you to know yourself, but also to know the universe. Because as you dive deeper into all of this, you start to realize that you are one with everything. That you are one with all the other beings. That you are one with the universe itself. And then if you are the universe in a human form, just like Rumi was saying, you're not a drop in the ocean, you're the whole ocean in a drop, then it's also important to understand how am I interacting with this ocean? How am I interacting with this universe? And so I love this teaching because you're never done exploring it. You're never done exploring who you really are. Also, because you are an infinite being that is always expanding and evolving and growing until it reaches enlightenment, until it becomes a spiritual master and reunites with the divine. And even so, well, then you don't have human experiences anymore or alien experiences on other planets, but you still support the unseen. You still play a role in these other realms. And so I highly recommend that you devote yourself to uncovering more about who you really are by, you know, reading books, listening to podcasts, joining a mystery school, because the more you can uncover who you really are, the more this truth sets you free. It sets you free and it gives you clarity on who you came here to be, how you can serve, how you can find fulfillment, how you can find freedom, how you can find abundance, how you can let go of the control and the power that is incredibly present on this planet and trying to keep you small, how you can express your highest potential. And so this teaching that seems to be very simple and very basic, and you're like, well, yeah, I know myself, actually, if you think, yeah, I know myself, you're being tricked by your ego. You're being tricked by your mind that wants to keep you safe. And so always be open to uncovering more of who you are. Because this is going to lead me to another teaching. The, sec the third one actually in the workbook. It's that you're going to go through cycles of death rebirth journeys many times in your life especially as a woman entrepreneur especially as a leader the more leadership you're meant to have in your life or the more leadership you're desiring to have in your life because you're you also create your life so you get to choose as well the more you're going to go through these death rebirth journeys so that you can expand into the leader you desire to be. You can only lead people if you've mastered a few lessons, if you've walked a certain path, if you've experienced certain things that gained you the wisdom so that you can guide others. Because this is what leadership is. Leadership means you're walking a path, you're the first person or one of the first persons to walk this path in your own unique way. And then you have people that are inspired by that and that follow you. So you need to have the experience, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the embodiment to be able to guide others. And to have that level of mastery, you'll go through what I call death rebirth journeys and this is a teaching that osiris the, the ancient egyptian god of um, death and healing and agriculture was teaching he was known as the main god in ancient egypt but jesus as well 
they both went through a death and a rebirth, a resurrection. And so they played on a world stage this idea that we have to die and be reborn. But it was actually a gateway for us to understand that our souls are going to go through these journeys on a spiritual level. And uh, Jesus teaches that when he says, you must be born again. So you're not going to go back in the womb of your mother, but you're going to go back in the womb of the great mother. You're going to go back in the womb of the universe. So that you can let go of who you are not or who you were in the past. And maybe that was working great, but your soul wants more. And I have experienced so many of these journeys. The first one is always the biggest one. It's the most transformative. And it's really that spiritual awakening. It's when you realize that there's a larger universe that you're connecting with it. It's when you start to ask yourself, who am I? What is my purpose? How can I serve? What are my gifts? When you start to ask yourself all these questions and you find answers and you start to live accordingly through those answers, you have a huge spiritual awakening and you start changing many things in your life, right? <laughs> I mean, I changed everything, <laughs> even the language that I'm working in. <laughs> I mean, this is silly. Not everybody is going to go through that. But, you know, like I changed country. I changed work. I changed my relationship with myself. I changed uh, beliefs about who I am. This led to a lot of, you know, people not understanding who I was becoming. They were like, you used to fit into that box in my head. And now you're being that person. I don't understand. And you're talking about all these spiritual things and yoga and energy healing and ancient wisdom. Why is that interesting? Well, it's because they haven't gone through that first big spir spiritual awakening and they're not understanding that there's a greater universe at play and that they can play and dance with it and use it to co-create the life of their dreams, the most fulfilling and purposeful life they could dream of. But that's their journey. They will get there eventually. Not everybody goes through that at 30 or 35. Most people, it's later in their life, actually. And so that first big death rebirth journey is often called the spiritual awakening. Um, and you start to change things in your life. You change career, you change partners sometimes, you, you move houses, you move city, you move country, because who you've become as a result of uncovering more of who you are and expressing more of your true essence is just not totally aligned with what you had created for yourself before. And that's normal. That's actually meant to happen but the more you walk this path the more you're going to go through these journeys again they can be small journeys sometimes you can go through a small death rebirth journey that is like two three months long sometimes they can extend over longer periods and the more you hold on to what you thought you had to be to what you wear the harder it's going to be to go through it again to go through it actually and so, um, you know, you're really being invited to go through this death rebirth journey when you start to be unfulfilled. You used to love what you were doing. You used to love your work, love your clients, but suddenly it's just not fulfilling you anymore. There's a sense that you're meant for more. There's frustration that's also building up in your life. Or you can feel that, Things aren't working out anymore. You don't understand why. Uh, suddenly you have financial issues or you have relationship issues or you have back pain or you need a surgery. Something's just showing up in your life and it's creating chaos. Or it's pushing you in a corner and you feel like the only solution is just to go up because there's no way out, right? These are all signs that your soul has activated a new death rebirth journey. Because she wants you to express more of who you really are. She wants you to stop sp playing small. She wants you to expand your essence and bring her into the world. And this journey is divided in four steps. And it really, really starts with letting go. So it's about letting go of who you are not. And when I say that, it's, it doesn't always hit home for people. It's not always understood. So let me try to explain that a bit better. 
If that's how you're feeling in your life right now, it's really the opportunity to ask yourself the following questions. What am I doing that's not fulfilling me? Because if it's not fulfilling you, it's time to let go of it. What am I doing that is draining me? When I do it, I feel exhausted afterwards. It doesn't energize me. If that's present in your life, it's time to let go of these tasks or this job or this relationship or this situation. Um, where am I playing small? I have evolved in the past years, in the past months. I've learned certain things, certain skills, and I'm not expressing them in the world because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of judgment. I'm afraid of rejection. I'm afraid it might not work out. I'm afraid I might um, go the wrong path. It's new. Am I enough? You know, all these thoughts that show up and that prevent us from truly expressing the new expertise or the new skills we've gained. Where are you playing small in your life? Where are you hiding? Where are you keeping certain things to yourself and not using them to help others or not expressing them simply because it's you? Like you came here to be yourself, to be wildly yourself. You came here to be paid to be yourself and find true fulfillment and love and abundance and freedom as a result. You didn't come here to fit into a box. Nobody fits into that box anyways. Even though everybody is trying and all those who are trying are miserable, there's no box. It's just a big lie that we've been sold so that we could be good sheep. Yes, I know. But this box doesn't really exist. It's a construct of the mind. It's a construct of society. And it's not serving anyone. And so ask yourself these questions. Where is my energy drained? What is not fulfilling me anymore? Where am I playing small? Where am I hiding? What is not serving me? Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's a belief about who you are. Maybe it's a way you've been showing up. Just be really, really honest with yourself and have a look 360 degrees of your life, your business, who you are. Again, we go to that concept of know thyself and let go of what isn't serving you and what is not in your highest potential because that needs to go. That is the old view. And it was working at some point and we're really grateful it was and you expanded to become that person but you're ready for a new chapter. You're ready for your next level. You're ready for a new iteration of your soul, a new expression of who you really are. And so there's a law in the universe that's called the law of oneness, completeness. I love this law because it really says that nothing's empty, everything's full. And... Um, I'm sure you've already heard that. And I love to play with this law because it means that every time that you create space, the universe is going to fill it in. Every time you remove dresses from your wardrobe because they don't fit you anymore or you don't like them anymore, oh, it leaves place for new dresses to get in there. <laughs> you see? But this also works in the sense that if you let go of clients that are not aligned anymore or an offer that doesn't fulfill you anymore or a business that doesn't fulfill you anymore or a relationship or a belief or a habit, the universe is going to fill it with something else that is more aligned because the universe is there to support your evolution, your expansion. And so it can be scary to let go at first. And so... You know, I didn't say this was going to be easy, but it is rewarding and fulfilling in the end. You have to learn to dance with fear. You have to learn to be comfortable in the unknown. But this first step is really about letting go and then letting the universe fill it. Letting the universe guide you. And so I speak more about those four stages in the workbook. And I highly recommend that you have a look at it um, by downloading it with the link that is in the show notes of my of this podcast episode. Um, because I am explaining exactly to you how you can work through that and the other stages that come afterwards. And if you want support in really going through that journey, and this is exactly where you are right now in your life, 
uh, make sure to check out the retreat that I am doing in March, March 12 until the 15th, the Feminine Force Retreat. This is a four-day retreat where we are going to do exactly that. We are going to reconnect you with your soul, your essence, who you came here to be into the world so that you can birth that into the world, birth your dreams and find that fulfillment and that direction that you've been seeking in your life. And if you're not available in March, I also do this work one-on-one, -on -one, obviously. So you can, um, I have a few spots for one-on-one -on -one mentoring actually right now. So reach out to me in my DMs on social media and let's see if we're a good fit. I hope this helped. Uh, these two uh, ancient wisdom teachings are so, so key. So the first one is know thyself. Always keep exploring who you really are through reading, through uh, being self-aware through joining a course, a program, a mystery school, because there is so much more to explore about who you really are. And the more you do, the more you'll find truth about your essence, about who you came here to be, and that will set you free and give you the fulfillment and direction that you're seeking. And the second one, it's um, you must be born again. And this journey, this death rebirth journey happens in four stages and it really starts with letting go. And I've shared with you a few key points to help you know, okay, my soul has just kicked off a new death rebirth journey, a new cycle. It's time for me to have a really honest look at my life and let go of what is in alliance and what isn't serving me. Even though it's scary, even though this throws me into the unknown, the more I create space, the more the universe is going to fill it. And I am going to be so, so you're, going to, you're going to be so happy on the other side of this journey. I promise you, it is life-changing. And I am so passionate at helping women do so. So join my retreat or reach out if you want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. So much love to you and I'll see you really soon.